right on schedule, the Bonehead Detectives. All right, we're back on the trail of Big Bad Extinction. Bob Bakker thinks anyone who buys the asteroid theory's got his head in the clouds. Let's see who he's interrogating. Hey, it looks like old T-Rex. You got it, Sam. Bob thinks that the dinosaurs themselves, including the tyrant Lizard King, may have caused their own extinction. The next question is kind of obvious. How? Well, according to Bob, the dinos' problems started back at the beginning of the Cretaceous period. Back then, the Earth looked a lot different. There was just one humongous megacontinent called Pangaea. But then, parts of Pangaea started to break off and drift away and turn into the cool continents we know and love today. For a while, there was a huge ocean right in the middle of North America. But slowly, it dried up, and these things called land bridges appeared. And Dr. Bob said those land bridges led the dinosaurs straight to the pet cemetery. When shallow seas drain away, animals can walk. A dinosaur could walk from Wyoming, across Alaska, to Mongolia. And vice versa, a Chinese dinosaur can walk across the Bering Land Bridge, down through Canada into Wyoming. Every dinosaur that moves would be carrying 20 or 30 diseases. At the end of the Jurassic, there were land bridges everywhere. Dozens of dinosaurs were moving, carrying hundreds of diseases. There's no way you could prevent worldwide die-offs of the animals who moved. The situation turned seriously grave. According to Bob, the big bad dinosaurs were killed by these little itty bitty squishy oozy germs. I don't know, Sam. With all due respect to Bob's dino disease theory, I kind of think the asteroid theory packs more punch. Well, then check out super scientist Stephen Jay Gould. He's got a new theory to add to the mix. Why do dinosaurs die? Well, we don't know, but if you wanted to conjecture... Conjecture? Yeah, it means, like, an educated guess. Conjecture. I like it. I'm going to make it my word of the day. It's certainly plausible, and I'm just giving you a conjecture now, that the large size of dinosaurs may have been very detrimental to their existence in catastrophic times. Because if you have very large bodies, then uh, your population size isn't very big. And the best way to get through a catastrophe is to have lots of you. And the more of you that are around, the better the opportunity that some of you will get through. Also, if you're very big, you tend to be quite specialized and there literally aren't many places to hide. So they died because they were too big. And when times got tough, there weren't enough of them to survive. Let's call this the too big for their bridges theory. Okay, Sam? Not so fast. Here comes another paleo sleuth, David Archibald, and he's got some evidence of his own. And when we look at the pattern of extinction, it's almost a mystery at the beginning because we see five groups that are, are drastically affected while the other groups aren't affected so much. Sharks are affected, uh, lizards are affected, the two groups of dinosaurs, and marsupials. And the mystery here is why were sharks affected, uh, dinosaurs affected, while, for example, placental mammals, the group we belong to, was not drastically affected. So the dinos died, but turtles, crocodiles, frogs, heck, even the early mammals, our ancestors survived. Why? Well, something like an asteroid hitting might have made it so cold that the jungle-loving dinos just couldn't handle it. Oh, yeah? Well, then bundle up, girl. We're going to Alaska. Alaska? Yep. A bonehead by the name of Bill Clemens found some dino bones up there, where, even in the Cretaceous, winters were harsh. These are uh, some of the bones that have been collected on the north slope of Alaska. There were remains of dinosaurs, and they gave us some of the first evidence that dinosaurs could live at very high altitudes. So Bill's saying that some dinos are ready for anything, including cold weather. Exactly. Bones like these from the North Slope show us that dinosaurs lived in that uh, cold, dark environment some 65 uh, million years ago. And if you look at the specimens, there are ele elements from small forms, from larger forms, so that we know we had everything from hatchling dinosaurs to old adults. So if the asteroid had made the world one big refrigerator, the polar dinos in Alaska would have survived and all those warm water loving turtles would have died. But actually, the opposite occurs. Dinosaurs become extinct, turtles and crocodiles survive, which tells us then that it wasn't extreme cold or extreme darkness. 
that caused the extinction of these bees. Detective Bell has something we like to call the cactus climate theory. He thinks that the dinos were slowly killed off as the temperature on Earth got colder. You know how it gets colder when you walk up a mountain in the desert? You'll get to a point where it's too cold for a cactus to grow. And like those cacti, the dinos had a limit to what they could take. The Earth kept getting colder and colder, and the dinos had fewer and fewer places to live, until finally, they all froze to death. Well, the theories keep piling up. Asteroid, disease, too big for their bridges, the climate theory. But still no killer. Are we ever going to solve this one? Don't go extinct. There are more clues coming. We're back on the trail of our killer. And bonehead Bob Bakker's not done debunking the meteorite theory. The meteorite theory is awfully popular because it makes a great magazine cover. Time magazine had this wonderful painting of a T-Rex in distress as this grand fireball came down on it. It's great art, it's great cinema, it's bunk science. It ignores the victim profile. Remember, we've got a serial killer to find. Somebody who kills in the ecosystem the same way every time. And the victim profile doesn't include frogs and doesn't include pond turtles. And uh, the meteorite theory completely ignores those uh, unfortunate, uncomfortable facts. Man, Bob's ripping into your meteorite theory like a hungry T-Rex going at a duckbill steak. Hey, it's not just my theory. Remember Kirk? He stands by the asteroid theory, too. It was sort of like National Enquirer or science. The asteroid killed the dinosaurs. But in the 14 years that have elapsed since the discovery of iridium in Italy, an enormous amount of data has been compiled, both about asteroids, about asteroid impacts, and about the biotic record, the record of plant and animal life across the Cretaceous tertiary boundary. We begin to realize that asteroids and comets and impacts are not uncommon things in our solar system, and there's no reason that we shouldn't expect asteroid impacts or comet impacts to be a moving force in the evolution of life on this planet. Well, Sam, still want to smash the meteorite theory into a million pieces? I don't know. I guess it kind of makes sense, but then so do all the other theories. This extinction dude sure covered his tracks. Well, one thing's for sure. Without extinction, life on the planet would be a lot different. Just ask Dr. Stephen J. Gould. And it's therefore likely that we're here today because, by the luck of the draw, dinosaurs who had been dominant over mammals in ordinary times got felled in a mass extinction for which no creature could possibly prepare. And again, that gives the history of life its very quirky, fortuitous, chancy character. We are literally here only because of the good fortune of dinosaur extinction. So, if the dinos hadn't died out, humans might never have evolved. Wow. I guess it's good they did, huh? For us humans, I mean. I'll say. And the least we can do now is try and solve the mystery of what killed them. We hit the fossil trail in pursuit of a killer. Now let's go over our most wanted list. Well, you've got paleo detective Bill Clemens' cactus climate theory, which says that it got colder slowly. And just like the cacti on the mountain, when it got to a certain point, it was just too cold to survive. Stephen Jay Gould gave us the too big for their britches theory. So if you're very big, you tend to be quite specialized. There literally aren't many places to hide. And then there's anti-bunk activist Dr. Bob Bakker and his killer germ theory. Dozens of dinosaurs were moving, carrying hundreds of diseases. There's no way you could prevent worldwide die-offs. And finally, there's Badlands detective Kirk Johnson and the very popular asteroid theory. Well, I think an asteroid was the culprit. And I think we're going to have to give Kirk our bonehead award for outstanding achievement in hard rocking. For raking and bagging the fossil leaves in the Badlands, we congratulate Kirk on his truly historic contribution to this show. But will we ever know exactly who killed the dinos? Only time will tell. Thanks for the amazing question of the day, Renata. And we're going to stay on this case until this mystery is solved. And I have this to say to extinction. You can run, but you cannot hide. Sam, do you realize you're threatening extinction, the killer of killers? So? I've been learning kung fu down at the dojo in the mall. If push comes to I shove... I didn't know you were taking kung fu. I'm a green belt in karate. You are? Yeah. Check this out. <laughs> what happened? I flipped you. Uh, why don't you take on extinction all by yourself? I'm just gonna go take a hot bath. <laughs>